pastoral care, and a word about table manners at the Lord's house, whether at home or away. Okay, it really was our own fault that we didn't go to the Lord's Supper that day. With a computer map and directions in hand, we took off for church in the area of Hutchinson, Minnesota. Judy and I were not late. In fact, we made it with a minute to spare. We signed the guest book, shook hands with the greeter, received a bulletin, and entered the sanctuary. Naturally, we got the looks. After all, we were visitors, and this was our first Sunday there. We found a pew and sat down. It was a communion Sunday. It was a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation. Then there it was, a note in the bulletin concerning attendance at the Lord's Supper. One of the lines read, quote, Guests wishing to receive the sacrament must speak with our pastor before communing. End quote. So, what did we do? When the time came, we remained in our pews, thankful that the pastor and the congregation cared enough about us to ask us to wait on communing until we could speak with the pastor. On the way out of church, at the end of the service, I thanked the pastor for the loving practice of the biblical doctrine known as closed communion. He was pleasantly surprised. Likely, pastors don't receive such thank yous very often. Talking with the pastor about the Lord's Supper is really all about table manners and a confession of the truth. First, consider table manners. You would never go to another person's house, walk in, sit down, and expect to be fed. That would be presumptuous and rude. You would never expect to go to the White House and sit down at a dinner there without being invited. That, too, would be really presumptuous and very rude. How much more so, then, when it is the Lord's house and you are a visitor, a guest? It really is important to exercise proper table manners when you are visiting another congregation with which we are in fellowship. Remember a few things. 1. Do not assume that you have a right to attend, that is, that you are somehow entitled to go to the Lord's Supper at that place. 2. If you would like to go to the sacrament of the altar at that place, try to contact the pastor a day or so prior to the service. And please, please don't wait until five minutes before the service begins. 3. Don't be offended if you are asked to speak with the pastor before attending the Lord's Supper. 4. Be respectful and understanding if you are not given permission to commune there or if you are asked to wait. So, consider the opportunity that you are going to be given by speaking to the pastor. It will be an opportunity for you to make a confession of the truth of what you believe. Perhaps he'll ask you some questions. What sort of questions? Well, here are some that might be asked, although not all of them are going to be asked. Questions like this. What is the name of your home congregation? Is your congregation a member of another synod? Who is your pastor? Would your pastor approve of your communing here? Are you a confirmed member of your home congregation? Are you a member of a lodge or unionistic society? Are you under church discipline in your home congregation? Why do you desire to commune here? What do you hope to receive in the Lord's Supper? Are you prepared? Finally, a question like this might be very helpful for you and for others. Would you be angry if I asked you to wait before communing here? Holy Communion is given and intended to be a blessing. Christ himself has given his very body born of Mary and the blood he shed on the cross as a last will and testament to his church, a gift of his body and his blood along with the bread and the wine in the Holy Communion. It is given so that you may receive the body and blood of Christ, the bread and the wine, the forgiveness of your sins, a quiet conscience and peace, hope, joy. Your communing is also a horizontal thing. 
in other words, with other people who are attending the Lord's Supper there that day as well. You are stating that you believe, teach, and confess what that congregation believes, teaches, and confesses. And sometimes you can't know that until you wait a while and find out what it is that this congregation believes, teaches, and confesses. The Holy Communion is a gift given by Christ to His Bride, the Church, and is intended for those who know why they are coming to the Lord's Supper and what they hope to receive. But it is also possible to commune to your judgment if you don't know why you are coming or what you hope to receive. Please read through 1 Corinthians 10 and 11 on this. Pastors are not policemen of the Lord's Supper. They are stewards of the mysteries of God. That's according to 1 Corinthians 4.1. And the Lord's Supper is one of those gospel mysteries. And on the last day, each pastor will be called to give an account of his stewardship. That's according to Hebrews 13.17. May this be helpful to you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.